Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to a brand new Mod Spotlight. Today, taking a look at Building Gadgets 2. That's right, Building Gadgets 2 will shortly be available for Minecraft version 1.20.1, uh, and going forward, hopefully. Uh, building Gadgets 2 is a complete rewrite from scratch of my original Building Gadgets mod, the first mod I ever made, whose code base was a gigantic mess, as you've heard me say many times in the past and I decided it's finally time to buckle down and rewrite this thing from scratch. So I did, uh, it's mostly there. Uh, there's some pieces that aren't back yet, but I have plans to add them. However, we're at the point where I want you guys to start testing the mod out and letting me know like how, how it feels, if it's good, if there's bugs, like I need bug testers, right? So I wanna get this in your hands. That said, I have added a couple new features and functionalities that I think you guys will like. Uh, so the main focus of this video will be showing you the, the basics of building gadgets and covering the new things. Um, I won't do like a full deep dive in every single mode, but you'll get an idea of what the mod is if you've never seen it before. And if you are familiar with building gadgets, you will be able to see a bunch of new features that I've added that I think you'll like. For example, the cut and paste gadget which I'm personally very proud of. So let's take a look, shall we? To start off, let's cover the basics. Uh, so the building gadget allows you to build things uh, and there's a bunch of different modes in it. As you can see, there is an energy requirement for it and you can charge that up using your standard RF energy or forge energy. Um, if we bring up the UI here with uh, the hotkey, you'll see there's a bunch of different modes that you can use. The standard and default mode is build to me, which means a line of blocks will be built from the block you're looking at to the player. Um, and you can shift right click, on a, right click on a block to choose which blocks will be placed. You'll see an outline of what's gonna be placed in the world. And then when you right click, it'll place those blocks for you, which looks really cool. Uh, there's also an undo functionality, which has a hotkey. So you can either click the undo button here or use the hotkey and it'll undo that. And as you'll notice on my hotbar, it's taking the items out of my inventory to place them. Uh, if you don't have enough items in the world, you'll see a red overline there and you won't be able to place them until you have enough items. Uh, if you have a partial number of items, it'll place as many as it can, but it obviously won't place any more. There's a bunch of different modes available here, uh, such as grid mode, which will place blocks in a grid. Uh, and with this one, you can uh, see the grid positioning. So if we look at these blocks here, you'll notice that it's placing uh, in, a, in, a, in a bit of an area here with a, with a gap in between. And as we increase the range, which also has a hotkey, by the way, uh, you'll see it eventually gets larger and larger. And then it's a bigger area, but closer together. And then finally, an even bigger area and closer together. So this is a great way to place torches or, or stagger things. This particular mode, and a few others has a place on top modifier. So if you enable place on top, it'll place the blocks on top of the block you're looking at. So right now it's kind of placing it around these blocks. Uh, if I choose place on top, it'll go ahead and place them on top of it. And then you can do something like this. Okay, uh, there's the horizontal row, uh, which is pretty cool. It'll uh, build a horizontal row away from the block you're, or you're looking at. So like this. And it's the direction you're looking that it goes in. And again, this accepts a place on top modifier. So if you want to build out like that, you can. Okay, there's the uh, horizontal wall, uh, which will build around or on top of whatever blocks you're looking at. And you'll notice the undo functionality will uh, quickly overwrite and reverse the blocks as they're building for you. Uh, stairs mode, surface mode, which will uh, basically place itself on top of uh, any block that you're looking at. So you'll notice I'm looking at tall grass here. It'll place it on top of that. Um, if we, for example, had, let's say, break out a few blocks here. Notice that when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at dirt. So it's only gonna place on top of the dirt. And here I'm looking at grass. It's only gonna place on top of the grass. However, with surface mode, we can enable fuzzy which we'll place on top of any block. And finally, with surface mode, there's another functionality called connected area. And what connected area does is notice that currently, and I'm gonna go into creative for this just to demonstrate it a little bit better. Um, if we turn on connected area, it's only gonna place on the surface um, if the area is connected. So notice how right now it's only placing on this row. 
with connected area off, it'll place on both because they're not connected. So this requires them to be connected, this does not. If you want, you know, if you're in connected mode and you have a block here, for example, they are connected now and this doesn't make a difference for this mode, right? Um, so that'll, that'll be connected mode. And that mode is a lot more useful uh, and, and shown in the exchanging gadget. Uh, finally, we've got the anchor functionality is still here. So what anchor does is allows you to place a bunch of blocks um, and anchor them to the world. Again, there's a hotkey for this that you can configure or you can hit the anchor button. It'll keep them there and uh, let you see what it's going to look like before you actually place it. And then you can go ahead and right click anywhere in the world and it'll place the blocks where they're anchored at. And then again, functionality undo works just fine. Finally, there's the ray trace fluids mode. Uh, what this does is makes it so that with ray trace fluids off, it's not you know, letting you see fluids. So when I do that, it's gonna place the blocks down there. If we enable ray trace fluids on, it will place on top of fluids. And that's the main functionality of the building gadget. The exchanging gadget works very similar to the building gadget. Uh, you'll notice that it's gonna outline what you've got. There are four modes here, surface mode, uh, which, you know, does a, a square area, vertical column, horizontal column, and then finally grid mode. Um, so you can exchange blocks in world and it'll wind up giving you the blocks. Just like in building gadget one, uh, things like grass will turn into dirt unless you enchant the tool with silk touch, in which case you'll get the grass. So you'll notice here when I'm doing this, um, I've got dirt in my hotbar and it's going to exchange it with dirt. And obviously it's using dirt so if we were to do a better example here, if we did something like this, you'll see I'm getting dirt instead of getting grass. However, if I enchant this with Silk Touch, I will get grass. So I'll go ahead and enchant with Silk Touch here now. And we'll see that when we go to exchange grass with stone, we will get the grass blocks. Similar to the building gadget, you can undo. So for example, if I were to place some blocks in the world there and then undo them, they would reverse back and go back. Obviously, you're going to need the items in your inventory still for the undo to work. Uh, you also have the fuzzy and connected textures area here. So for example, if I put it on surface mode and we extend this range a little bit, you'll notice that it's only gonna swap out dirt blocks unless I turn on fuzzy mode, in which place it'll swap out whatever blocks it wants. Uh, in addition, we can turn on connected area mode, which will only uh, extend to connected areas. So a better example might be over here. If I was trying to swap out some dirt, we'll see that connected area doesn't make a difference because there's this section in the middle. However, now we're only gonna swap out this row unless we turn off connected area, which we'll be allowed to do both. A new addition is the effect block entities option for the exchanger. Uh, by default, the exchanger will not affect any block entities. So things like a chest, for example, will not be affected when you go to exchange it. So if we were to do something like this, you'll notice the chest is not affected. However, if you want to affect block entities, you can turn this on and then apparently it won't work. Well, that was supposed to work. See, find bugs. This is why I need you guys to help me test. No, wait, I forgot we're not in fuzzy mode. So if we affect block entities with fuzzy mode enabled, you'll notice now it can overwrite the chest. Notice the chest will drop its contents and you will get the chest back. It will not automatically give you the contents of the chest. You can put the chest back with an undo. Furthermore, chests and other block entities are suppo supported both for the exchanging gadget and for the building gadget. Just note, obviously, you won't be copying the contents of the chests because I'm not letting you do items.
Next up is the Destruction Gadget. This one has slightly different functionality from the other gadgets. Um, by default, all of the settings are set to zero, which means it won't do anything. What this block does is destroy blocks. It will remove blocks from an area and not give you the drops. That is a very important note. Uh, so for example, if I enable depth of one, you'll see that I am now in uh, depth of one. And whatever area I'm looking at, it will void when I right click. So I'm currently doing a depth of one and we're going up, right, left, and down zero blocks. Um, if I extend this depth in, you'll see here that we can do that, and then I can void the whole area. You can undo these. You can also anchor to see what's going to happen. And you can expand on the up and down direction. And this up and down direction depends on the block face you're looking at. So for example, right now I'm looking at the top of the block face, so up and down is that way. However, if I'm looking in this direction, up and down is that way. Uh, and if I'm looking at this block face, you'll notice that up and down is this way. Just like the exchanging gadget, by default, this does not affect tile entities. So if I came over here and we brought this depth down to one, you'll notice it won't affect the tile entity. However, uh, if I do allow it to affect tile entities with the same setting that's in the exchanger, I can now void out tile entities. Note that it'll drop any contents. However, any other things that would, uh, the chest itself doesn't drop. Uh, also, the item itself doesn't drop. So with the charging station, for example, the coal here will drop into the world, but we'll lose the energy and we'll lose the charging station itself. Can't imagine too many situations where you'd want to void tile entities, but hey, that's your decision. It should be noted that you can either bring this menu up by holding the F key or whatever the, the hotkey is for the uh, menus, or you can shift right click and it'll come up without you having to hold the hotkey. Now on to two of my favorites. Uh, first off, we'll take a look at the copy paste gadget. Uh, the copy paste gadget has two modes, copy and paste. Uh, the copy paste gadget has a few other things that we can take a look at here as well. So first off, let's try copying an area. Simply right click on one corner uh, and shift right click on another corner and you'll see the area highlighted here in green. These are the things that you are copying. Once you've copied this, you can switch to paste mode and you'll see the exact same structure rendered. It starts at the position that you right clicked. So the first right click position here. Uh, we can anchor this just like we normally did, and then we can right click to build that structure. Pretty cool. In addition to this, uh, when you're in copy mode, you can go ahead and edit the copy settings. So if we go into the settings menu here, we'll see the X and Y and Z coordinates of where we're copying. So right now we're starting at zero and we're ending at X negative seven, Y zero, Z negative two. And we can adjust these as we see fit. So if we want to expand the area a little bit more, if we want to go higher, we can. If we want to go lower, we can. And if we want to go higher like this, absolutely. So if we wanted to go down a Y level and then up on the end and confirm that, now when we go to paste, you'll see that we're grabbing the dirt and grass below it. This does not have a red overlay if you're missing items and it'll just skip any items you're missing. So when I go to place here, you'll notice it doesn't place any of the grass blocks because I don't happen to have any in my inventory. In addition with paste mode, when you go into the settings menu, uh, you can adjust where the placement is. So the settings menu button, when you're in copy mode, lets you do this and change what's being copied. In paste mode, that settings button will allow you to adjust where in the world the paste will go. So if you want this to go a few blocks higher than normal and hit confirm, and if we anchor this, you'll notice it's being placed up there, six blocks above where I looked, and then right click to place it. In addition, there's a convenient materials list that you can look at to see how many blocks you need and how many blocks you're missing. Uh, you'll notice here that it tells you you need 16 stone blocks and you have 16, 17 dirt blocks and you have 17, and zero out of seven grass blocks because you don't have any of those. If you grab a couple grass blocks here, um, when, you're, when you're missing some number of items, it'll be colored yellow. So red means you don't have any of it, yellow means you have some of it, and green means you have enough to do the paste. Uh, and if we were to go ahead and paste this here, and reset the adjustment, you'll notice it pasted some of the grass blocks in, as many as it could.
When you're in creative mode, everything will work for free, so you don't need to have the appropriate items in your inventory, and it won't exchange or require uh, energy. Uh, in addition, if we pop over here to uh, a nice little 9x9 house that I set up, I'm going to go ahead and place some things in here just to get ready. So we're going to start smelting up some oak blocks and into some... Uh, some some charcoal for us. I'll place some items away that I don't need anymore. And I'm going to try copying this whole building. So let's start with the copy area. We're going to click from here up to here. And you know what? I want to get the flooring. So let me go into the settings menu. We're going to drop down one Y level and bring it a little bit higher. And now when we confirm that, we can go ahead into paste mode and we'll see that we're ready to paste the entire building. Since I'm in creative, I don't need these items in my inventory. However, you can still look at the materials list to see everything you need. The grass, the oak planks, the pressure plates, the torches, the stone bricks, etc. Um, because copy paste does not copy tile entity data, when we go ahead and paste this into the world, you'll notice that the chest is empty and the furnace is empty. So none of that data came across. You'll also notice the bed and the door did not come through. Beds, doors, and a few other blocks are blacklisted entirely from the mod because they are very annoying. One other setting we haven't talked about just yet is a new feature, and that is the replace blocks feature. If I go ahead and break down here, actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna instead leave these here. And I'm going to in the settings menu, have this go down one Y level, right? I'm gonna anchor this guy, and now he's ready to place in the world just like he did before. By default, with replace blocks off, it will not overwrite existing blocks. So even though the flooring inside this house is made out of oak planks, there's dirt on the ground here, it can't replace that dirt. So when we paste it, you'll notice this does not work. I'm gonna undo that, and then I'm gonna turn on replace blocks mode. When I do this, uh, and we anchor it, and we go ahead and place it in the world, you'll notice it's exchanging the grass for the oak planks. Pretty cool. And in case you were wondering, yes, air is exchanged as well. So for example, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna anchor this. And I'm going to place this building inside this hill. Ready? Pretty cool. And then if you want, you can undo that as well. Notice the undo does not bring back the original blocks. Now I'm going to show off the brand new gadget, saving one of the coolest ones for last. Sorry, couldn't help it. Uh, the cut and paste gadget does exactly what it sounds like. Where copy paste will copy an area, cut and paste will remove an area. So just like the copy paste gadget, I can click here and then click up here on the top right, and you'll notice the outline is red instead of green, indicating that we are cutting the area. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the settings menu to do the same thing I did with the copy paste. I'm gonna bring everything down one Y level, and then I'm gonna bring it up at the end so that we capture the flooring. Now the cut and paste gadget will remove the entities in the world and store their tile data. So things like the inventory of the furnace and the chest will be brought along with it. Uh, so we can go ahead and click the cut button once we're sure we're ready, and boom. You'll notice again that doors and beds are not allowed. And let's say I wanted to move this whole house right over to here. I'm going to once again go into the settings menu, bring down the Y level. We can anchor it just to make sure we're in the right place. And then we can go inside and say, yeah, does this look like it's going to be cool? I think it's going to be cool. Let's do it. And we can paste it in. You'll notice the furnace is still running with the amount of oak logs and charcoal. You'll notice the chest has the exact same contents. Now, no promises that every mod will appreciate me copying their tiles like that. Uh, there are uh, entity uh, settings that, that mods can use to prevent their blocks from being moved in this manner. Uh, but, you know, if you run into bugs, Eh, it is what it is. <laughs> I can't guarantee that every mod's going to work just right. But that is the cut and paste gadget. You'll notice that with the cut and paste gadget, it does not place any of the items in my inventory. You'll also notice that there is no undo functionality on the cut and paste gadget. You can anchor, but there is no undo. Uh, so I'm just going to cut this area out again just to show you that if we go down and uh, up here... And let's take a look at my inventory. I'm gonna clean it up just to make sure that it's nice and organized for you. You'll notice that none of the 
items go into the player's inventory when you're doing a cut and paste in this manner. So again, cut. The data is simply stored on the tool. One note, you can now go cut and paste another area. However, you can only store one area at a time per tool. So if you were to try to go and cut this, you'll notice this tool already has cut data stored. Click again to overwrite this data. When you close the menu and reopen it, you're gonna get the same warning. If you click it a second time with this tool open, it will overwrite the data on the tool and you will lose those blocks forever. Them's the breaks, kids. Oh my, I placed it a little bit too low, didn't I? So let's demonstrate what happens here. If I were to go ahead and cut this area now, it has no problem cutting it because the tool doesn't have any cut data. Uh, however, if I were to now go ahead and try to cut from here to here, I get the warning. If I click again, it says, all right, the original grass blocks that I cut are now lost forever, and I can paste in the three that I had. I'm going to go ahead and clear this adjusted placement and paste back the grass. So a couple notes about the cut and paste gadget. The replace blocks functionality is on by default with this one. Uh, so, you know, ideally you're going to be overwriting blocks all the time. You can turn it off if you wish. Just note, you only have one chance to paste your blocks into the world. For example, if you try to put a chest inside of a wall and replace blocks is turned off, you'll lose that chest data. So you only get one chance to paste things, make sure you do it right. Them's the breaks. The final thing I'd like to show you guys today before we wrap up the mod spotlight is the template manager. The template manager will allow you to save templates to items that you can recall later. So we have a really nice nine by nine. Perhaps we would like to store that information so that we can build that nine by nine another time. In previous versions of the mod, we had a preview that would show you the area that's not implemented yet, but it's something I hope to bring back at some point in the future. So the functionality of this UI is as follows. You place the copy paste gadget in the top slot. That's the only thing that fits up there, by the way. You'll notice I'm trying to click things in there. Nothing goes in except the copy paste gadget. And at this point, you can save the item onto a piece of paper. We shift click paper, it'll go into the bottom slot. When we mouse over the save button, you'll see that it's gonna write the information on the copy paste gadget to the paper. So if I hit save here, it'll turn into a template. Um, there's gonna be better things. I don't think template name is implemented yet. I gotta get that working. And there's a few other things that I'd like the template to be able to do for you. But for now, note that this template stores the information that the copy paste gadget had. As a reminder, I'm gonna jump into creative real quick. The copy paste gadget had my beautiful house. So let's undo that. And go ahead over here and take a look at this. Now I've got this template saved. Let's say I lose this copy paste gadget or something else happens to it. Uh, or I wanna share this with a friend. Hey, look at this amazing house that I built. I'm gonna go ahead and place the copy paste gadget in here, which you'll note has no paste information. And in fact, if it did have paste information, like so, we can have it overwritten. So let's go ahead and place the copy paste gadget in there with the template and we're going to load it on there. Now the copy paste gadget has my beautiful house once again. Hooray! Additional functionality of this block is you can click the copy button. What that will do is copy the information out of the template and place it on your computer's clipboard. This is information you can paste into a notepad or any text tracking application. You can post it on the internet, wherever you want. Um, it's a bunch of text that will represent the blocks that we just chose to place in the world. Um, you can then share that with your friends outside of the game. And then when you're ready, uh, you know, your friends can come into their world. They can have a piece of paper here. And if they put the same block of text on their clipboard, they can click the paste button and it'll create a template for them. Um, and then they can load that template onto a gadget and they can paste that into their world. So the functionality of copy and paste allows you to transfer the schematics you've made outside of the game. You can share it with your friends, post it on the internet, post it on Discord, whatever you want to do um, with that information. And uh, they'll be able to load up their game world, highlight and copy onto their clipboard what you gave them, click the paste button here, and then it'll create a template and they can place those blocks. Um, if blocks that you had from mods are not in their mod, it'll just place air instead. So for example, uh, if I were to do a copy paste area that had, um, 
let's say, the charging station from Charging Gadgets. Right? If I did this, boom to boom, it'll be able to paste that for me. If they didn't have Charging Gadgets in their world, when they paste it, it would paste like this with an air block in the middle. So no big deal if you share it with somebody who has a different set of mods than you do. Uh, and that's about it for now. Uh, the things that are missing currently from building gadgets are the construction paste. Uh, I think that's the main feature. Um, I'm curious if people ever used construction paste. Was that, like, was that a popular feature or did like nobody use that? Let me know in the comments um, about construction paste. Uh, and uh, some template functionality, like I'd like this preview thing to work better. I don't know if the template name is there right now. It probably does nothing. Um, there's a few other things like bits and bobs that I want to fix. And then obviously uh, any bugs. So as you guys are testing this, please go to the GitHub and report any bugs you find. Um, because yeah, I want to I wanna make this thing nice and solid. For now, Adult 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the Mod Spotlight on Building Gadgets 2 and hope you're excited for it. For now, go ahead and take it easy.